we have this set situation and we want maybe the coordinator to go there or we want new people to give us advice then we can advise them but they control they take care of their own uh, petty children and just send report to us comfort doyan she's the president of the petty traders and informal workers union of liberia we'll take a break on the program we come back we'll continue the discussion with the petty traders and we'll not take a break on the program Welcome back to Consumer Affairs. Um, today on the program, we're talking to Comfort Doyen. She's the president of the Petty Traders. We also have Hanon Tape from the Petty Traders. And we've just been joined in studio by Eric Blamo. He's from the Movement for Sustainable Alternative. Eric, uh, let me find out from you, your organization, Movement for Sustainable Alternative. What is the motive and what are you doing now? Uh, uh, thank you for the opportunity given to me uh, movement for for sustainable alternative most of was short was founded in 2013 of august at the university of labrio where a group of students came together to see how best they could help national government because we do observe that uh, that the well-being of students quite across the country was rather than taken care of so our first executive director haraji kuma deemed it necessary to establish this group to see how best they can help our emerging students, most especially those that are in the grade school, after high school, I mean, to know the very career I mean, they, they, they may love to involve into. That's the reason for which the movement for sustainable authority was organized. So your focus now is on career development. Career development. So how many schools are you uh, working along with? For now, we are working with not um, uh, less than 10, 10 public high school in central Morovia. Public schools? Yeah. Okay. We deal with the... But why only public schools? But because we do observe that in the public school, you find most of the underprivileged students are there who parents normally don't have the means to more like send their children to private institution. And you also observe but the government of Liberia through the Ministry of Education, sir, it has improved uh, facilities, uh, it has improved the capacity of teachers at the public schools, so the public schools are up to standard. Yeah, the capacity of teachers are there. I mean, not denying that, but we're talking about the, 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 the development of those students in those various schools. I mean, that, that is why. That is why it's matter because even at the level of the University of Liberia, where the the, the, the state-owned premier university, there are a whole lot of irregularity there. So our focus point has been drawn most especially to the public school. But why indeed we are also working with other private institutions? Like I can I can recall in 20, 2015, what Moza did. Moza went to uh, the Ditwe uh, Public School, Gabriel College School in uh, New Jersey, and and the. The government school on the on the capital bypass. We organize a career career development program, and we also organize a tutorial for them because we understood that most students was about to take the the University of Liberia entrance, and most of them having deficiencies in in math, mathematical and mathematics and English. So 
Moza on on a decided to come in to see how best she could help national government because we do observe that when it comes to English and mathematics, most of our students have proper into it, and the national government cannot really help those public schools. So we, as young intellectual from the angle of the University of Liberia, we have decided to go on our own and help those students provided the, 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 the tutorial for them and they went at the University of Liberia, they took the entrance, most of them make a pass today, they are attending the University of Liberia. So what have you been telling them in terms of uh, career? Yeah, we most especially we been uh, informing them because some of us that that, that are in the institution we were one way in the like you're talking about university library almost everybody want to go to the business yeah, college the one i'm saying uh, because some of us we we more like we, we we got affected from it before you will see we got something to call peer pressure when we were in high school our attention was to do a specific course but you see one of your colleagues will come up to you and say my man when you do a civil engineer you will make money we are either having that mathematical background at the end of the day you go at the university of Liberia, you go and you say you want to do something after three three semester you waste your time you get to understand that you are not you know what i mean you are not improving in that identical area and you coming back to say no i get my screen in in reading mm -hmm. i want to do english i want to do public administration i want to do economics and now other three years have been a wasted year some of us were fitting from a so we decided that the kids that are coming after all should not be fitting so most have decided more like to go into the federal institution to see how best to train our young kids to tell them that indeed after high school where you get your screen in, if you're good at mathematics, you can go and do the economics, you can go and do the mathematics. If you're good at literature, you get the courses, you can go that and is, do that's a like a career yes. where you have deficiency. Exactly so. So we get we get we, we have experts from all diverse backgrounds who came and tutored them for for more than two weeks. And at the end of the day, they took the entrance, they were at the University of Liberia and they fit in their career. So these are some of the activity that movement for sustainable alternative have been ongoing what is the feedback from the students themselves yeah most of the students that we help i uh, today came back to us and and you know, they congratulated us and they took membership of the institution and they are serving as an ambassador in the very institution they came from before going to the university of Liberia. so they are also bearing the membership of moza in the federal high schools okay and so your observation the interaction with the students do you think they are ready for yeah. the future or are they getting ready for the future or like you're talking about peer pressure the selection of career is based on peer pressure yeah that what we are saying about uh, 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 we came here today to to more like uh drag you through but uh most are also having a, a bigger program to be here tomorrow but i know we'll dive into that but let me go directly to to your question most of the students that we had, one way, one way of the order, the feedback we are getting from there, they are positive because we, we believe that they are, through the help of Moza, they are able to, uh, they are preparing themselves for the future ahead. Why it is true that we know there are so many difficulties along the way, sir, but Moza are able to, more like able to train them, call them, and tell them you know I mean, the way forward for the future. Because if you look at the name of the institution, Movement for Sustainable Alternative, you could be the alternative for the future tomorrow because we are observed in this country that our national government is not adhering to the young people we have observed that the young people why will you say that yeah we we we, we say that because we have observed we listened to the president where in the, the president came on national radio and said the educational system in Liberia is a mess but they're trying not to reform it the one i'm saying they are still in the stage of reforming Mm -hmm. but you have not reached to the peak that indeed we want it to be like for example i can remember i it's went a long-term program the days of long-term program i went i went i went i went Lagos university in in, in lagos wherein we went for inter, in, in, internship training we observed that in the uni, in that identical university you will see students have access to student loan you will see the fa the very facility and the environment for learning you know what i mean is very smooth for us for Liberia. everything on the contrary is different so that's the reason for which we have the we organize the group movement for sustainable alternative so those kids today we are that city institute today could be the alternative 
for Labrador tomorrow, where our national government cannot reach, I think with the alternative, with the kind of a training that we are getting from the institution, I think we can be able to improve the education system and look in the direction of young people, that young people are the future leader, that they can be, they can become good citizens for tomorrow. Eric uh, Blamo from the Movement for Sustainable Eternity. He's one of our guests on the program today. Let me go back to the president of the Petty Traders and Informal Workers uh, Union. Now your members, are they paying taxes to, to the government? Yeah, like I said, uh, the MOU that was signed between we and the city government, uh, there was a system put in place where uh, Petty Trader we pay some fees to the city government and also pay to uh, uh, the ministry through the ministry of uh, commerce to lra and uh, it was very successful uh, we had a team at what is the procedure how is it done you go to the ministry of commerce or what uh, there's a team set up the team was set up uh, through the uh, the former msme director uh director Wee reed who made it possible for that MOU to be signed. And we have uh, a team from the LRA, team from uh, Petty Trader, and a uh, team from Commerce that was at that desk who uh, were collecting the money from uh, the Petty Traders themselves, and then uh, they take it back to the central bank. Okay, so, Hannah, as a Petty Trader for now, what is your uh, dream? What is your vision for tomorrow? What kind of business person you want to be in Liberia? Yeah, I want to be um, importers. I want to be someone who will be importing goods into Liberia that the petty traders will be able to buy from me. But I'm sure when you have the opportunity from one level to another, will you still be involved with petty traders? You have graduated from that level to another? Yeah, for now, although... Like someone uh, say, I'm selling, now I'm selling on the sidewalk, but I'm into the shop now, or I'm into the store, so yeah. I'm at another level now. Yeah, yeah. For now, I'm a petty trader selling on the sidewalk, but I work also with the National Petty Trader Union you know, of Liberia as National Coordinator. Okay. Yeah, I have my business at Kelly Street. So for now, from the, from the sidewalk level, we go into a little shop or a little shop to a store. So I have comfort you want to come. Back. Yeah, so what we uh our vision is to transform the informal to the formal. Okay. I was at the Alero Convention in 2014-2015 and I was also at uh the uh the Urban Forum in in Quito uh last year and uh to transform the informal to the form, I mean f the informal to the formal is a process. It's not a day job, it's a long term plan. And uh, our vision, our objective as institution is to make sure that these people graduate from this level to another level. So with this vision, what, what role the international partners, your international partners, what role have they been playing? Yeah, the first thing we had a country activities with street debt, that they train, street that don't give money okay. to our uh, institution, but they use their money to train you and this training that we acquired from for those years is what we try to apply to our member. And uh, before you could see, that you, you go in the street, you see that people violating, they and police have series of problems, and all those things we try to put it under control. Now our member focus is to get what they supposed to get from the, from their their business and improve their livelihood because these are people who have two three children who they send to school they are self-employed people government need to uh recognize that uh they leave their their homes and go to work uh, 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 uh at their business site so it's not something that you just overlook them government need to see how best what kind of mechanism at the need to put in place to be able to, for these people to, for the, for them to have a sustainable uh, 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 environment somewhere that they can vent smoothly and be able to be, generate funds or generate income to be able to pay their taxes to government and also take care of their family so that, that those kind of thing we are looking at and to see how best they can move okay talking about small businesses we have uh, the president of the petty traders here now uh, some people have been saying that Liberians are not good at doing business. That is why they don't last. Well, we are. Uh, that is not true. That is not true. I know of petty traders in on Meglin Street who have graduated from the street uh, to the shop. Little guys that sell less. 
I even go to China. That we used to sell slippers. We used to go to Ghana and buy slippers. Now they are going to China. They have their store in China and building. They are, they are that lot, that lot them. And uh, when you talk to when you talk about small business like the petty trader land, we are informal uh, worker. Our informal worker, we have some people who make shoes. If you go to the uh, Mandona Street, Sa, and also the the Clay Street area there, we have and also uh, uh, Rano and Front Street. I mean Front Street, we have people who make shoes. They also are, are doing that for their own living. And we are looking at how we can work with uh, our partners so that uh, we can be able to improve. The, I, I was in uh, 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 Accra and I went to uh, Kumasi. Kumasi is where uh, people produce shoes. And uh, in, in Nigeria, I was in Nigeria. I also went to Abak. Abak is where the people produce their own shoes they make their own shoes so these are things the direction we are looking at to see how best we can get partner to help these people uh to have a factory for them or maybe train them and give them machine to be able to work and we started working on that we also started organizing in that direction so these are some of the things we want to do to our listeners if you want to be part today we discussing with the petty traders of Liberia. also you can call us on zero triple seven triple seven nine one five or zero seven seven zero three one four three three well hannah uh, when uh when comfort was speaking you wanted to add concerning librarians are not good at doing business do you agree with that no librarians are good at doing business because we i have some of my friends that were selling on magnet street at the junction those days when mary bro was a mayor now they're having the the shop on on front street on magnet street they are having their own shop they are going china some are there but why is going. it in the past they were not developing what what was really the problem well the harassment okay police will seize your goose uh, take it, and at the end of the day, you go to pay fine. You will not get your goods uh, the way. Uh, because you know, there are issues well, that uh, the information is that you were not living up to the regulation. You need to be into the market hall instead of being on the street. We are not market. We are not. Our people are not are not all market vendor. We have some market vendor, and we have street vendor. And street vendor is all around the world. If you go to New York, you go to South Africa, you go to Quito, you go anywhere. Chile, I was in Chile some time ago. They have street vendors. But they've been organized through the local government, that is the municipality. Mm -hmm. And the leadership work together. Then at the national level, they pay their taxes. That is how it works. But if you say there is no street seller at all, then how can you improve because you don't have the facility or capacity to give everybody a job in the country mm -hmm. so i expect other people to solve okay uh, hannah let me come back to you the uh, petty trader now she was talking about har harassment and she said for now she held the police uh they're working along with you professionally and you you're not being harassed any longer you're making a uh, progress in terms of uh, the business you doing number on the overall she spoke about some countries around the world where you also have petty traders and they have developed now in Morovia petty traders Morovia is the capital petty traders are trying to develop how is it like I'm sure the Union you have been some of some of your officials been taking out of town especially in the rural parts to observe what is going on so how is it like with the petty traders what are they saying are they are they making profit are the business are they are they progressing yeah like some of the petty traders like the guys on galley street are selling the shoes some of them are making profit but we have a little problem because where where they were selling before last year before december time because during the time we were doing the registration year before last at the housing bank on the side of housing mm -hmm. they were having a store the design if you can sell shoes they give you shoe stamp if you can sell um, and trousers and shirts they got a table for you but since mana broke him and destroy all the stores so the guys are selling on the ground so now they are complaining about the rain season is coming they don't have a place so we we are appealing to the national government if the government can give us the under part of housing bank the garage area that we can use if they want us to pay taxes to them we can do so 
Yeah. Um, Madam President. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to erase uh, this notion of our uh, of the Liberian who are saying that petty trader, they are people who, got, who are nothing, who are just starting. It's not so. Petty trader are people, the petty trader union are people who sell. Some of them go to Guinea and buy their goods. The only reason why they cannot go into store because they have not reached that requirement to uh, go and rent store. But uh, there are people who can sustain themselves, who can sustain their family. So uh, let us erase that notion that petty trader, that people who get small business. No, mm -hmm. that is not true. These are people who go to Guinea, who go to Ghana and buy their goods and come on the sidewalk, keep their goods in the warehouse, pay for the warehouse and sell on the sidewalk. When their goods finish, they go back and get their goods to come and sell. Uh, 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 it's not people who don't have anything. Although we have people in that category, yes, but uh, we are growing. We are not at that time, kind of level again. If you go in the street there, the witness is in the street, you go and do some interview and you will get some information of what we are saying here. But what I would like to uh, say to my petty trader out there, uh, that we should remain strong, uh, the institution called the uh, Federation of Informal and Petty Trader and Informal Workers are in the process of advocating for the rights and welfare of all petty trader within our county, I mean in our country. And... Uh, we 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 also talk to them for them to remain calm that uh we are working in their interest to make sure that uh they be recognized especially when it comes to the ear junction and that of the pins very really petty traders they are in ser series of harassment there are a lot of series um, there are a lot of harassment that go on on a daily basis also in dwala uh they should remain calm and also just channel their their complaint through the red the the, the the dealership and we will be able to negotiate or uh, 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 advocate for their rights and welfare Thank well you. that's all we have time for on this edition of consumer affairs we have been in conversation uh, with the leadership of the petty traders and informal union of liberia i am justin Kono. Hours a day. Zwedru, Boy, Jama, Mikra, Ukraine, Ganta, Banga, Buchanan. All the ball is straight. Every day. This is on Mill Radio. Radio on Mill. Let's get it started. Use of dump sites and honor developed property as toilet or to dump human feces is strictly not allowed. Anyone violating this is subject to a fine. Owners of all run-down and abandoned vehicles should have them removed from the streets of the city by marking the windshields. Notice will be given to have them removed within 30 days, after which the vehicle will be disposed of by the city government. Keep Monrovia clean and healthy. A message from the Monrovia City Corporation. Let's get it started. More information, more music, more quality, more programs, more care, more balance, more coverage, more responsibility, more peace, more education, more, more, more. On Mill Radio, Radio gives, gives you more.
information you can find anywhere. Listen to Unmill Radio. This is On the Radio. The time is 3 o'clock. This is On the Radio, the official voice of the United Nations in Liberia. The Army Radio News Summary, I'm Olive Summers. The government of Liberia through the airport authority has awarded a 25-year air cargo handling operations concession to Global Logistics Services Incorporated. The Global Logistics Services is partnering with the National Aviation Services to form a joint venture company. According to the Chief Executive Officer of Global Logistics Services, his organization is committed to transforming cargo handling operations at the Rabos International Airport. He, however, applauded the government for seeing the need to empower a Liberian company in handling cargo operations at the RIA. Youth Exploring Solution Yes says it has organized a forum to rally the young people's participation in the protection of the environment. Yes said it is carrying out the process through the conduct of the Liberia Environmental Awareness Forum, LEAF. Stephen Lavla said LEAF enables participants to develop their own grassroots initiative with a zero budget. He said participants of the forum in August will begin implementing their grassroots project. He said one of the activities earmarked by participants is the planting of flowers. For his part, the managing director of the Liberia Airport Authority, Baku Freeman, described the deal as an important milestone and that the airport authority looks forward to a smooth partnership which will enhance the work of the Liberian people. The Alumni Association of the St. Mary High School in Nima County is launching a fund drive to improve conditions at the institution. The former students are aiming to raise more than 30,000 U.S. dollars. The program committee had told on Mill Radio that the funds are intended to boost instructional services as well as provide educational aids for underprivileged students. Faustina Gomba pointed out that the proceeds the fund drive slated for this weekend will also go towards rehabilitating the boarding facilities at the school. Mr. Gomba is hopeful that the alumni and former students of the San Nicole based school will support the initiative. The news is coming to you from Onmel Radio, the official voice of the United Nations in Liberia. Doctors in South Africa said a nine-year-old infected with HIV at birth has spent most of his life without needing any treatment. The child, whose identity is being protected, was given a boost of treatment shortly after birth. He has since been off drugs for eight and a half years without symptoms or signs of active virus. The family is said to be really delighted. And the Zimbabwe state-owned Herald newspaper has reported that President Robert Mugabe has given his sister-in-law $60,000 as a birthday gift. It says the gift was a thank Junior Gumbu Chima, who is the First Lady's elder sister, for helping Mr. Mugabe's children. Mrs. Gumbu Chuma is a pastor and the Herald reports that the president used the opportunity of a birthday celebrations to criticize Pentecostal preachers who make money from their congregants by stage managing miracles. Zimbabwe's economy is currently struggling to grow and the country is experiencing a cash shortage as there are not enough dollar notes. That's the Omer Radio News Summary of the public information. <laughs> Over the last six months, Commercial Motorcyclists Union of Liberia has been engaged in a number of consultations with key target groups, including commercial motorcyclists and security institutions. But in June 2017, the union organized a three days consolidated forum for commercial motorcyclists, each in Bomi and Bon counties through the Omil Quick Impact Project. The union is in the
process of uh, securing another quick impact project from Omel in at mobilizing commercial motorcyclists to serve as agents for change and propagating the message of peace in Liberia. In Lofa, Nimba, River says Mike Gibby, Maryland, and Grand Gide. How can commercial motorcyclists serve as agents for change? This plus more will be um, discussing here. Let me just begin with the boat chair. Welcome again to Civil Face Hour. Thank you, sir. How is the uh, motorcycle union doing? Well, uh, to be quite honest, the motorcycle union, the, the commercial motorcycle riders of Liberia are doing very well uh, in the past uh, 18 months, the people of Liberia have seen a lot of great changes uh, in terms of their behavior, their character, and of course their value. Uh, because we went involved with them, we made it very plain to them that we all need to do everything we can to protect the peace of our country. And so it's going to, it's been going very well. With this topic that we are discussing, uh, that commercial motorcyclism are going to be serving as agents for change presupposes that there have been something somewhere mm -hmm. that is costing so that is opting for uh, a change as agents now tell us what has been a product for which change has now been a, a focus point here well you know yeah, so i tell you in the past uh, year since uh, the uh, inception of the motorcycle uh, commercializing the motorcycle uh, here in liberia the young people have been look at head with uh, our security uh, agents and we've seen a lot of uh, mob violence and motorcycles if they were any member of their team got involved in any form of uh, uh, accident they will take the matters in their own hands and uh, so it's really not been going down well for the public and they've been branded over the past few years as uh, Arab bomber, they call them uh, Swiss Arab bombers, they call them all kinds of names in the past. And so when we got involved with them, we made it plain to them that look, uh, we understand the things and the challenges you all face with the securities in the country, the police and we'll try to intervene and help you to uh, plead your case with the police and, and be an advocate for you. And so when we started that uh, advocacy for the motorcyclists, they begin to see that, look, the police thought, wow, these guys are not actually bad. They just needed a voice and they needed someone to represent them. And so those young people switched from becoming, you know, uh, Arab bomber or Swiss Arab bomber as people call them mm -hmm. and they begin to put on a new posture of an attitude of trying to be involved in the society and this time is like um, you know what the the Bible is a poor uh, Saul became poor. People mm -hmm. begin to see an, 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 an impressive behavior from the motorcycle. Have they also changed from uh, burning vehicles when any other members is involved with accident with a vehicle without any time they will congregate and then they will take that action against that vehicle well for have the, they changed from that yeah, for the most part yes uh well, there are some skin diseases of uh, ex exceptional cases where we, we we keep hearing that but you know change does not come overnight but the leader is here uh, i mean uh, john is here ab is going to speak to that but from what we've been hearing in the past uh, uh several months when uh the motorcyclist is involved in accident they will always congregate come together but then they would call the president and say we got to take it to the police and the police will come and the proper step rule of law will be followed what brought you into the picture what led you what motivated you what prompted your being with them they've asked me to uh, to serve as their board chair i was not here i was in the states uh, when they had their meeting their meeting and then you know at first they felt very disenchanted with the union that was being operated and so they said to themselves let's get someone who will motivate us and help us to do the right thing and because i'm on the radio with my insight for successful living program motivating people so they said well we're going to contact reverend type whatever he is and when he returned and so they did a letter and that's one of the best group of young people I've ever worked with in this country. So that's how I got involved with them. And then so we now have this caption, being an agent 
of positive change because they have been named and branded as non-living thing you know all kinds of name people gave them and now they have beginning to demonstrate that truly they have changed and they want to protect the peace of the country and so that's the that's a campaign that we are taking around and thank god for for all mills intervention uh, they have come alongside to help us with in Dot member, uh, and then we had a meeting with the uh, motorcycle leadership from Cape Mount, from Bapolu. We had a wonderful three days with them. We played a soccer match. We explained to them how these young people can become, you know, peace agent. As you know, they are ge- the geographical spread of the motorcycle. They're everywhere where motorcycle where cars cannot go. So if there's a group of people that I believe that can really help us to promote the peace of our country, it's the motorcyclists. They are everywhere. <laughs> Just join us to listen to a seven of hour on home radio. We are discussing commercial motorcycles serving as for change and spreading a message of peace in Liberia. If you have any comment or question, please call us on zero triple seven triple seven nine one five or zero seven seven zero three one four four three three. My guests in the studio are Reverend Luther J. Tappe, he's the board chairperson of the Liberia Motorcycle Union, and John Ibrahim Keon, he's the president of the Commercial Motorcyclist Union of Liberia. Now, A B, now <clears throat> let me hear from you first. The names that uh, Reverend Tapper called Swiss are bummer, uh, non living thing, and it goes on. Do you have other names that I used to call you? The motorcyclists? Yeah. What are some of the names again? I don't remember. First of all, let me take this time to appreciate you so much for the time and uh, also to Omio for giving us the opportunity to come and talk to our people out there. Uh, those names, <laughs> me, and, you know, there are some of them Arab boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, non living thing, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes they call us uh, people of no use in society. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so many names that have been attached. So, these names, when you hear them, do they make you angry? Do they irritate you? Do you want to make a change? Have you changed? Those names have they changed? Well, one thing I want to inform each and every person is that uh, once you are determined to do something in life, and uh, specifically where you want to become a motorcyclist or maybe you want to do something like do your particular business people will refer to you maybe like uh you are a lazy person and you know uh but let me just refer that to my own sector the motorcycle sector if you decide to be a motorcyclist the first thing is they look at you as criminal sometimes they call you arab or uh, 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 arm robber and so since i started to run motorbike from 2007 the first thing I had an agenda, and the agenda is that uh, I should be a person in society that tomorrow I will be an agent, all right, to someone's life that indeed they will say, yes, this man rode back and today he has this, and uh, tomorrow let me be a role model mm-hmm. to somebody. And so with that, we started to ride motorbike and uh, not to be a waste to society, because after the war, after the civil crisis, no job. Mm. There are a lot of people who sometimes some of our brothers out there some of them partake in the civil crisis and having to be traumatized all right but yet and still talking to them decide to ride motorbike you know we had an agenda that indeed tomorrow we someone can depend on us because i have a family i have my mother i have my wife i have people whom i'm catering to Mm -hmm. so if someone calling me those names i I don't matter it don't matter to me all I focus on is my living. Mm. And I tell you true motorbike riding before my ascendancy to the presidency. Uh, uh, at least I was able to put down a structure. You got a house. Motorbike riding. You got a house. Oh yes. Mm. Yes. And I can assure you that there are a lot of boys out there now. Some of them bought cars. They are in car now and uh, some of them build houses. If you see a motorcycle rider house, you will you will begin to imagine as a weather you know it was true motorback that they built that house mm. it's just about det- determination that's all so how can you um take this across to the rest of those who are listening to you how can they themselves be like you well it's just it's just easy like i said it's about determination all right don't just look at your condition today and uh you think that it is all about you you should have the focus that tomorrow you have something to do mm. and you must uh, 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 like make an impact to your nation. Yeah. I always told people, all right, we can be a waste to society. You can ride motorbike and do something good. You can sell 
pepper. There are people who sell in Bilabo and pepper today, they build houses. People who sell in quarter, they build houses. Mm -hmm. It's about being a determined person. In your motorcycle. So if I'm going out there talking to motorcyclists, the first thing I always told them that if I can ride a motorbike, all right, for the length of years, and today I'm serving as a leader for you, all right, and I can go out of the road talking to people, it means that you, you yourself. You can even become someone greater than me. Mm. Or you can even become a president. And one of the things we're telling people is that you are capable of becoming representative or even president. Good. Yes, because we have a lot of our boys today. Some of them are college graduates. Some of them are in high school. Some of them are high school graduates. And, and, and the only major thing is that sometimes just the concept that we are missing that once you are a college or high school graduate, you must go and sit into office. That's just what we are missing. All right? Motorbike riding is a business by itself. You can be able to do something, go out of it. Mm -hmm. It's just how you use your resources. Yeah, because you That's get all. more money, right? Because your daily reports yeah, you get money, you get money, but just like uh, the kind of money people are actually making before, it's not the kind of money we are making now because <laughs> people have been restricted now to feel rules, all right? Mm. So the kind of money people used to make before. That's what I want to ask you now. What is the relationship between you, motorcyclists, and the police? Well, now uh, I can tell you that the, the relationship now is cordial. It's very good. Uh, uh, and I want to appreciate... Uh, Was it good before? Couple. Well, uh, before, you know, uh, one of the problems, like uh, the butcher said, the leadership, you know, every leader has its own agenda. And so before, the leaders that were there, I want to believe, then we met him and uh, we changed his name from... Hmm. From Saul to Paul, <laughs> all right. Right now, yeah. Oh, he was Saul before. Oh yes. Uh, the reason <laughs> being, uh, 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 right uh, in the past, motorcycle look at Oromokroma as someone who was Saul, who was prosecuting them, and so when 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 he uh, uh, mantle of leadership again as one or two, uh, working in line with uh, um, Gregor Koma, we told him that indeed the motorcyclists are good people. Why is true? There are some of us who are not really on the right path, but in love with us as leadership to give them some senses, all right? Because there are some people, like I said, who partake in the civil crisis, so they need to be talked to, all right? Mm. And we met him on several occasions, even from here, as we speak right now, the Boji and I, there are some leaders now that are al already waiting for us at his office. We're supposed to be going there, discussing some issues that has to do with motorcyclists and police, because uh, as we speak, uh, we're now approaching the elections. That's a sad All right. Thing. So, and, and doing before and after the elections, we need to maintain a peace in our country. Good. So, you know, we have a very good working relationship with the Liberal National Police. You talk about the elections, and it's very key. I understand that there are some no go areas for you. Yeah. Elections coming. Politicians who want to use the motorcyclists, you know, to run campaigns. You will be moving some places, more money coming. Elections coming that there are some no-go areas for them, but because of the elections, politicians will likely want to use them to go to those areas. Would there be any compromise? Uh, for, uh, say thank you. Uh, the first thing is that uh, the motorcyclists have not made any official statement declaring support for any political party. We don't want to go that route. The reason is, these young people serve the general public. They take our children to school, our wives to the market, and they want to be an agent of peace, promoting peace and nonviolent messages. And so when you become too political, then of course you have, you have uh, watered down your chances in becoming a peace agent. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that, uh, so in all of our meetings, as you say, in all of our meetings, we always tell them, be careful with these politicians who are coming. Omil is very much interested in what we are doing because, uh, these young people are able to go any part of the country that no else, no other person can go. Vehicle can go there, but Roman vision cannot even go where the motorcyclists can go. And so, with their change of behavior, they have become a major, major force that can be used to propagate peace everywhere. And so, where the no-go zone area, I'm telling you, say it's only Moravia. That Marvel area, but in Grand Basa, in, mm -hmm. in in Sano, there's no no go zone area. There's there's a few streets. I mean, Tottenham Boulevard, whatever the government kind of restrict that. We're still talking to uh, one or two about kind of easing up those kinds of restriction on the board because they have seen tremendous change 
in of attitude of these young people not the way it used to be where they always uh, fight the police and burn cars and all of that well, the challenges are going to be there but we're going to do our best with the uh, with the uh, help of all male to continue to help and prepare them to make them agent of peace mm. there are other motorcyclists that are not captured to move from that